driving home with no <laughs> speedometer, temperature, either fuel, but uh, at least we are managing to go home at this point. I think we should be able to arrive safe. So at this point, this is the current condition inside the vehicle, as you guys are seeing over there. It's showing that a key light, even though I have the keys on my hand, I can't flash the, um, the, the front lights, I can't open the windows. But if you press uh, the push start button, sometimes it takes a while to have the accessory on you can see at this point at least I have the cluster working but once I have um, the accessories on you will see that this headlight is on as you probably are seeing over there sometimes this one is the one um, lighting up and you can see my IPDM is just right there I believe the issue with this vehicle is with the IPDM so I'll have to check uh, properly this wiring make sure that um, there's no problem but for sure I have to check the IPDM so to start this vehicle, I have to start it from the battery itself because even if I try, you see that I'm holding the brake, I'm just quick hitting the start button and nothing happens. So I have to jump start it in order to have it running. <laughs> so basically to start, I just come over here in the IPDM and I just connect that wire there and then the details rattle as usual but as you guys are seeing over here I was able to start the vehicle and funny thing no check engine light that's the serious part good people i hope you guys are doing good so as i saw in the intro i was just trying to do some contextualization for you guys just to show you how the vehicle is behaving and after that i just went straight away and connected uh the uh, my diagnosis machine into the obd ports in order to understand which kind of errors we are having on the systems and if you guys see right here i just i i, I just tried to lay out to lay out uh the errors that we were having from different modules so you can see that on the engine you have the error from the class u so you you have the u uh 1001 and if we move to the other one, which is the ABS module, you will also see that we have the U-Class with U1000. So also on the HICAS system, which is the steering system of, of, of the vehicle, you can see that also we have present there uh, the, the CAN communication error. So definitely we do have an issue with the CAN line. With and basically the CAN line, it's uh, an onboard um, uh, network that the vehicle has, which allows uh, the different modules to communicate. So you see, you have information that travels from the, your ABS module to your computer, for example, to determine the, the vehicle speed. You have also that a vehicle speed being sent to different modules, such as HICA, such the uh, the transmission module, in other two, uh, and those um, all modules are sharing information which actually states the actual uh, state of the vehicle so here it were it gets interesting so i'm looking at the report from the bcm so the bcm is the body, body control module which um, actually has a bunch of relays and controls 
um, a lot of uh, modules in the vehicle so basically the small box that i show you with a lot of wirings on the bonnet so on my vehicle you can see that that we do have a cam communication but we can see that it it's not receiving the vehicle speed is not receiving um, um, information for the nets antenna which is the one that uh, uh, it's responsible to communicate with the vehicle of uh, with the key vehicle that's why we have the orange key lighting up on the dash you can also say see that that we have an error for the ignition relay and that's why we are not um, managing to to get uh, the ignition off and because the, 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 the BCM doesn't know if the, the ignition is switched on or off, you can see also that we have errors for the shift position. And of course, if the vehicle doesn't know uh, where the shift uh, is positioned at, it will not uh, crank at all. So you can also see the other errors right there, which is the status relay. Uh, which actually gives us the status of the vehicle and the ignition relay. So basically, this explains uh, uh, definitely that uh, and confirms that actually we do have problems with uh, the CAN network on this vehicle. So um, I went into the service manual in order to try to understand actually what the u1000 and u1001 means so if you guys if you guys just see there uh, according to the description um it shows us that there is problem with the harness and uh, nissan did a good job actually uh describing the um, the procedure of diagnosing those and uh, i am actually quite happy uh, I was actually quite happy to follow it up because it was very, very straightforward, uh, we, which basically uh, you can see on this diagram um, that actually allows us to, to, to troubleshoot. We can see that uh, when we do have, for example, a, a main a, a problem with the, the main line between the data link connector and the ABS actuator, we can see that the engine torque is affected the shift harness increases um, for example it's possible to not hear the the, the, the warning chime when we are reversing um, when we have the ignition switched on the headlamps are on and the cooling fan continues to rotate so basically it allowed me to drill down the problems and uh, what I had to do basically was just to isolate the CAN um, network. So I started to test from the IPDM to the ABS module, to the ECU, to the ABS. Uh, so each module had to be tested. I used a multimeter since the CAN network is composed by two wires, which is the CAN, CAN high and CAN low. So I had to test the continuity between those lines until I find the section where uh, there is no continuity. So what I did next, folks, was just to uh, actually identify the connectors uh, on the wiring. So I did identify which ones, uh, which pins are meant for the um, CAN connection. So you will see that I laid down on the PCM, on the ACM, on, on the IPDM and also on the TCM. So this allowed me to drill down the number of wires that need to be tested. So at this point, I was just doing a visual inspection. So you can see that this uh, wiring had been tempered before, because as I mentioned before, this car was packed in uh, two shops where they were trying to fix it and they tried to <laughs> To, uh, see what they could do and someone already tried to to to, to uh, test the um, can lines so as you can see do, the can lines are those uh, lines in blue and pink from that connector that I hold it right there which travels through a main line that goes behind the firewall uh, which connects the ABS which is on the other side and one thing that I also noticed that there were some wires that they have been chipped I believe that that was caused by rats uh, during the time that the vehicle was stopped so definitely I thought it was a good idea to also remove the brake booster in order to check any kind of um, uh, bro uh, broken wires behind the brake booster we managed to remove the brake booster and we have a lot of debris right here and I just think I found the issue you can just see right there 
the wiring has been corroded just over there so definitely this is one of the major problems or the major or not the major problem that we were facing let's try it out to remove the wiring from its place and we should be able to to see so as you guys are seeing over there that issue was caused actually because there is a draining passage so that wiring is next to a draining passage which i believe you can see that is clogged so when it it gets clogged it holds a lot of uh, moisture um, and that place basically is wet all the time and with that um, it increases the possibility to to rust things and uh, um, with uh, that drain plot for so many long years i believe that that was the cause that ended up destroying the wiring on that section and i managed to remove the connector that goes inside right there and you guys can see that we have have a lot of trash here and we ended up finding the wires that were um a split as you can see uh, so those two in fact the blue and the pink one are the ones for the can bus and the ignition um, switch as you can see all of them were split so basically i will be repairing those make sure that they are look uh, they, 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 they are good test, test the continuity and make sure that everything works for that i will be using this old wiring that i have laying around here so it's good quality wiring in the soldering iron to make sure that everything looks good as it should so we are done here with the wiring as you guys are probably seeing over there tested the continuity we have the continuity also made sure to weld with this tin and i'll just insert the cable now and see if we have any results so folks uh did the first um connection for the testing as you guys are seeing over there i got the key the orange key already disappeared okay switch on to accessories <laughs> the radio is on the radio is on folks <laughs> and it has a music box let's switch to on wow the oil pressure now it's coming on wow uh, let me just try to connect my diagnosis machine and try to see the errors that we have now. Many adorable hours later. So from there, folks, uh, I managed to um, connect the machine and all the can errors were gone. <laughs> I was so happy. And as you can see, I was just running uh, multiple tests. I could flash the headlights. I could, uh, uh, I had blinkers as you guys are seeing over there. The fog lights were also working and one thing that i noticed right away when i entered the car and i switched uh, on the ignition the fans were not uh, running anymore so definitely this was a win but the big question remain will it gonna start it did start and right away the radio which was not working also started to work so definitely was a win much later so finalized all the repairs in the wiring as you guys have seen over there so now i'm about to put back the brake booster everything is looking good it's on the braking pump and i still have to work in this area where i need to redo everything so i have to make sure that everything uh, sits where it should everything is pretty much organized because this project has to come out clean so basically all this wiring comes down here the ipdm box sits just right here where um i will be installing back uh the holder for the ipdm box just right here so with that i started to clean up uh, the area and also started to organize the wires made sure to uh, insert back the bracket for the um, IPDM also started to lay out the wiring to make sure that uh, all the wires go in the direction that they should should and also had to do some uh, fixes since some wires had been chopped around some other ones um, were already um, 
the seal was not uh, in good condition so i made sure that all of them were pretty much well insulated the connection was good and as you can see later on i was able to insert the ipdm started to lay around uh, the wires i used some zip ties to make sure that everything is organized as it should so folks from what it was a few moments ago this is how the wiring is looking i still have to um finalize uh, the protection on on this wiring because at this point i just organized the wirings i need to add some shields and uh as you guys are seeing over there it's looking way way better than it was right this dust cover just comes in there so yeah folks i'm just loving how everything it's coming out as you guys are probably seeing there so i think i'm finally done with the wiring as you guys are seeing over there just protected those wirings to make sure that we don't have any trouble with rats or similar animals <laughs> but yeah at least it's looking pretty much organized comparing on how it was did the same all the way back there you can kind of see probably and uh until this side so basically the wiring is all set up the fuse box is just there just need to connect it and we should be ready to go because the battery sits right there just added the battery support connected the ipdm where it should we were good to insert the battery we managed to finalize all the uh, wiring on this side we already installed the battery tray all the connections are looking good as you guys are seeing over here everything looks pretty pretty awesome so let's say in terms of wiring we are already done and uh take this as a successful repair oh yeah